Hello. Um, so my name's Dan, and uh, I'm a photographer, and this is David Fernie. And um, I've put that up there to give you a little bit of backstory of how I became a photographer. I used to really like photography, but I, more than that, I really wanted to be the next him. So um, instead of doing photography at university, I did environment and biology. And then as soon as I got there, I kind of realised that it wasn't quite as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Um, there was a lot more statistics, a lot more maths, and um, I think it was when I realised that my dissertation was about how wood lice excrete urine as a gas to save water, but it might not be the rock and roll lifestyle that I was kind of looking for. <laughs> so um, at that point, I decided to start teaching myself photography, and I started photographing my friends around me as practice, and uh, my friends at the time were a band. And so that's been the basis of me learning photography, and I think that's why I've always um, hovered around music photography. I, I do lots of different types of photography, but I've always been involved in it. Um, and so I do press shoots for lots of different record labels. Um, <clears throat> I've collaborated with some amazing artists, uh, which is really fun. And I do, I've done lots of shoots for artwork. This thing isn't quite working over. Um, and I, I really enjoy that. And I've, like I said, been in Suck Magazine and Record Music Academy. But the thing I realised a few years ago was that a lot of editorial shoots or artwork shoots are quite brief. Uh, even if you're, say, collaborating on artwork, like with James Blake, you, you do three or four days, but I quite like spending a lot of time with a person so you can really collaborate. And so I started to um, get the idea in my head that I wanted to um, work with a band for a long period of time. And so I started looking for a band that, um, like an up and coming band um, that I could work with. I've got way too many pictures of other stuff that I've taken pictures of. Um, and so in 2012, I met, not them, I met, it's, it's gone in the wrong order, but I met these boys who are called the Bots, and they're from Glendale, California. And the guy on the left is Micaiah, and the guy on the right is Anaya, and they're two brothers. Um, and I think at the time Micaiah was 19 and Anaya was 15. And I listened to their music, I really liked their music. And then when they walked into my studio, <coughs> I realised that they were the band that I'd sort of been waiting for. They're super fun, really chilled, really unassuming, really funny. They're a bunch of teenagers skateboarding and bouncing off the walls. And Anaya's got massive hair and braces and knee high socks. So, um, so as soon as they walked in, I, I wanted to work with them. And uh, at the time, they were over from, from LA um, for like a couple of months in London. And it was around the time, it was like two months before the Olympics. And so I'd come up with a master plan. I'd actually rented an extra house. So I was going to rent it out to some sort of rich, plump Americans and make loads of money. Um, but that didn't really work, so I couldn't find any. So I rented it to them instead and made a massive loss. Um, <laughs> but it was kind of cool because they were in a house around the corner from me. So we were just hanging out. And I didn't have a specific idea to produce a photography zine or anything like that. But I just wanted to photograph them a lot. And, and so anyway, it turned into Stop It, which is a photography zine that I made with them. They like writing their name backwards for some reason, because it looks cool, but it confuses everyone. So that's why the, the zine was called Stop It. Um, but at the, at the time, getting ahead of myself, at the time, we didn't I didn't really think it was going to be a zine. We just talked about going on tour. And so they had a little um, European tour. And so I went off them with them in a little van. Um, and this is in Belgium, I think. And we've been driving along and I spotted this meadow that I really liked. And so I told them to get out of the van and go and stand in the meadow and eat an ice cream, I think. Um, but that, that picture was a bit rubbish. But then on the way back, I was like, Micaiah, skip like an idiot. And he did that, it looks really cool. Um, <laughs> so I quite like to um, collaborate and, and sort of instigate little things that happen. So it sort of seems candid, but it's, it's got a little bit of structure behind it. Basically, we were driving around Europe for nine days in that tiny van. There were seven of us, I think, in total. Um, there's the two of them, me, drum tech, uh, the driver, my brain's gone dead. But the main um, other one was their manager, who's also their mum, which is quite an interesting decision to make when you're going on tour in a small van. So um, there was lots of family politics and arguments, uh, which was quite amusing. And there was lots of sitting in the van playing GTA and eating biscuits. Uh, and there was lots of tie-dye, because they really, really liked tie-dye. 
And so that became a sort of theme of the zine. Um, this is when they tie-dyed my shoes for me. Uh, and this is, no, okay. Oh no, that's when they tie-dyed one of my t-shirts for me. Um, and yeah, and then this is when they really went overboard and, and I had thought he'd broken his arm and all the tie-dyes started to clash. But so the tie-dyes started to be a theme that I wanted to, when, when I realized that I wanted to make it into a zine, that um, I wanted to incorporate it into the packaging. Um, and then there were other things that I would set up I mean, and I was, he's a 15 year old kid, so he's always on Facebook. So I would it's like, sort of set up little things like this. And also, me and the mum, mama, would kind of clash sometimes. And she had this little um, replica of her dog who she missed. And, um, <laughs> and so she was really, really cared about it a lot. And then we'd have an argument because she could be a bit of a dick. And I, so I, I'm much taller than that, so I could put it in trees. <laughs> that she couldn't reach, and then I'd go and take a picture and then I would really like it. So I, there's a sort of theme of me torturing a sort of stuffed dog throughout the whole zine as well, um, which was fun. And then I also made them swim a lot. Um, I'm, this is the one on the left is when we were in, um, in Vienna and they played a gig. And we got a little bit drunk on because I was like, we can't wish she'd drunk, she'd jump in the river, it'd be really cool, we'll take a picture of you jumping in the river. So I persuaded them to jump off this bridge with me and then when we got in the water, he, he actually told me at that point he couldn't really swim very well. Um, and then he wanted to do it again and again and again. And at the time, I had a broken finger, and so that hurt quite a lot. And so then I'd, I'd make him swim, up, sort of, and he'd give an opportunity after that. Um, so that's one other thing that's in it. And then the other one is we were in Stuttgart, and uh, we were, there was, I think they, we got there really early, I think. And I just looked up. Um, things to do in Stuttgart, and I found the Schwein Museum, which is the world's biggest pig museum. Um, it is the world's premier pig museum, and it has 38,000 pig artifacts <laughs> and some really, really bemused German tourists with an iron background. Um, and so, for me, it was amazing because that's, like, they have like a bank vault put into the museum and filled it full of piggy banks. Um, so, for me, this is much more interesting than like photographing. I don't want to photograph them playing a gig because like, I don't really find that interesting, but put them in a bank vault full of piggy banks. Um, it's much better. Uh, yeah, and there was also, there was a BDSM floor in it, which was really weird. It was a woman <laughs> breastfeeding some piglets, and, and I, he's 15, so he was just like, whoa. Um, and then this is my favorite, which is pig lemmings with Jesus. Um, but anyway, so that all sort of formed together into a kind of narrative of some format. This thing doesn't really work. Oh, there we go. So, so anyway, when we, came, uh, when we came back, sorry. That one, yeah. When we came back, we still hadn't really got the idea of making it to a zine, but I, I definitely wanted to print something. And so at this, by this point, they were living in Dartford. And, um, we had these meetings, Skype meetings, and so this is my favourite one. So it's an eye at the bottom right. And I was also watching American football, because I'm quite a big American football fan. And we were also watching Felix Baumgartner jump out of a space balloon. And then I've got my um, Domino's Pizza um, delivery truck here. Um, that was a good day. And then, and then, so then we came up with the idea of like incorporating um, tie-dye packaging into it somehow. And so um, we got some, well, I found some Russian ladies who were amazing and um, sewed these bags together and then we tie dyed them. Go to the next one. See, Dan Walton. You know. Belgian blue and red kind of form a violet. Oi! For the chance, you can't. Um, and so then that's the final product after that. That film kind of gives the impression they tied out a really, but they actually did anything I tied out all of it. They did a tiny little bit and then went skateboarding. But um, this is the final thing, um, and the Church of London um, helped me design it, and they're amazing. And I just really liked the way um, it's not just that the tie-dye packaging really fits with the whole kind of design and makes it a bit more of a tangible finished product. Uh, 
And there's just a few pictures of it. Can we go to the next one? Um, yeah. And so we got, I think Anaya wrote the dates of the tour on the back of like a hotel receipt or something. Um, and there's lots of meat running through it as well, which I quite like, neither of the meat meat. Um, and also there's a pink page that runs through it, so we probably wanted to reference pigs throughout all of it. So a lot of the tie the um, tie-dye is pink. There's a pink page that runs symmetrically through it, and it's um, if it's not saddle stitched, it's center sewn with pink thread. Um, so the design's really nice. Uh, and then we had a little launch party, which is when I thought everyone would finally figure out that the stop it is the box backwards because the vinyl you can see from the inside and it sort of said the box, but no one understood it. Um, and then, and then from that, it sort of led to more collaboration from them. So I got to model um, a shoot I did for Lazy Oath recently, and it's just really nice because it just keeps on going. Um, and they were super stoked to get paid to wear clothes. They didn't really understand the concept, but they liked it. And then I'm doing another um, zine with Stevie G collaboration with him. When they were last over, I took them to Thor Park and put them on roller coasters. And um, Stevie G's gonna draw stuff over the top. And um, yeah, so it just keeps going. And that's kind of it. Thanks. Thanks.